to break down the smaller man. You couldn't have said it any better. That's right. Are you surprised, Tom, that Batchelder, who has been the smaller man as light as 168 early in his career, has allowed your guy to get inside and has fought in close quarters with him so much? Well, you know what? I think you got to credit Brian on that. I mean, he's showing a, a real good jab, an incoming jab tonight, and he's moving his head a lot better than he usually does. So, I mean, he, said he took a couple right hands, you know, earlier on in some of these rounds, but he is moving his head, and he's getting, he's, you know, I think it's to his credit that he is getting on the inside. No, he's, he's done his job, no doubt about it, but I think you should send a Christmas card to Danny Batchelder because he hasn't done much to stay outside. Right. <laughs> Tommy and Kello, thanks very much. Tommy and Kello in the corner of Brian Minto, of course. Tommy and Kello very busy with his other heavyweight fighter, Calvin Brock, as Brock gets ready to face Timur Abramov later this month. You know, the trainer Tommy and Kello is right. Brian has done what he needed to do for his fight plan. He's moved forward. He's used the jab to get in, but he has had help. Batshelda has not done a good job of being where he needed to be, to be real competitive in his fight. He has not stayed outside. He has not used that jab enough. Listen for the bell. Two rounds to go from A6 City. 25 years the home to big time boxing in South Jersey on the shore. Let's listen into the corner of Danny Batchelder. Round nine. Go ahead. Okay, two more rounds. Trying to give him a sense of the urgency. Reload Scott. your punches. Reload that right hand. Hear me? Reload! Scott Ardry telling him two more rounds. That's all he has in front of him. The 29-year-old from Saratoga, New York. His first fight over 200 pounds. He's been ranked in some organizations as a top 10 cruiserweight. This is a different beast here fighting at heavyweight against Brian Minto. Teddy scorecard, 78-74 Minto. Left hand on the inside. You know, a lot of people watching this will say, hey, Teddy, you want Batch out on the outside. He was a smaller man early in his career. He can use his skills better on the outside. But how's he going to do that if Mento, the bigger man, wants to be inside and he's coming forward as Tommy Okello, the young trainer of Mento, said? Well, the way you do it is, if you're Batshelder, you don't wait. And that's a good right hand by Batshelder, the best punch of the night. You don't wait until Mitchell gets inside. You use your jab on the outside, and you move your feet to the side, and you stay away from the ropes. And you keep good navigation in that ring. Move yourself around before Mitchell gets close. Seen enough Brian Minto fights to know that you never know what you're going to see, regardless of what you've been seeing. There have been quick turns and plot twists throughout many of his televised fights, and it always makes for exciting fights. You know, just a moment ago, showed you there's still opportunities for Batshelder, maybe not to win a decision, but maybe to make it interesting, you can catch Minto as Batshelder did a moment ago with a clean right hand. And again, you know Mento's coming straight in. So if I was Batshelder now, maybe it's too late to say, hey, stay on the outside, use your jab, navigate your way around, use your legs, keep distance. But now you can concentrate maybe on a moment, a moment of catching Mento as he comes in that front door, as you know he's going to continue trying to do, as he's been doing all night. Minto just gets under that right hand. Again, opportunities for Batshelder to keep distance, to use his jab, to then catch Minto as he comes forward, and to use his legs to keep that distance to his advantage and to keep Minto outside. Batshelder doing a better job this round of keeping that range, of using that ring. But maybe too little, too late. He needs offense. And he needs to find it in the next three minutes. Minto comes in with a right hand. One round to go. Tenth and final round of our heavyweight main event. Minto, Batchelder, three minutes to go. 
I wonder right around now, Batshell would wish he did not come in the heaviest of his career. Wilson's better bulking up and trying to be as big as a man who has been bigger throughout his career. I wonder if he wishes he was smaller and quicker. It's too late for those wishes now. And again, Batshouter should be noted, did take this fight on three weeks notice. Two minutes to go. Second time. Warning from referee Doc. Back to the jab for Minto. You know, I know we haven't talked about it, but every once in a while there's a separation. You can see what we talked about on the fight plan. Every once in a while, Batshelder will bounce a little bit. They go right there, go into a little, not now, but they go into a little bit of a bounce. And Minto has done a good job of just closing the gap. While that bounce, there's the bounce right there. Yep. And you see it a moment ago, and Minto has done a good job. And there's the bounce again. And Minto has done a pretty good job while Batshelder has been bouncing to close the gap and take advantage of that bounce. Understanding that Batshelder, and you're going to see the bounce again. There it is, right there. And as he's bouncing, what does Minto do? He knows it's clear sailing to walk in. Came in with the right hand. When a man's bouncing in front of you, Joe, he's not set to defend, and he's not set to punch. You might as well put a neon sign up that says, hey, come on in. I'm wide open. Want to remind you, coming up next after Friday Night Fights, it is the road to Omaha. The Super Regional College Baseball, Missouri versus Cal State Fullerton is coming up right after this main event. And again, mental, there's the bounce again. And while that bounce is taking place, that is the time to do that. Came in with the right hand, and Batchelder ties up. Again. Tonight, Minto got into the area he wanted to be as the bigger man in close. Batshelder did not keep it outside enough. Should be on the way to seven in a row, but you never know. Ten rounds between Minto and Batshelder in the books. We'll come back and hear from the judges. Stay with us. It offers something for everyone. Let's get the punch track fight recap. Danny Batchelder did a good job the last two rounds of 48-35 edge, but you can see what Minto did through 10 rounds. Teddy Atlas's scorecard after 10 rounds. He's got Brian Minto winning his seventh straight. Let's see what generous Joe Antonacci has to say. Hockey fans, after 10 rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Barbara Perez scores about 96-94. Judges Pierre Benoist and John Riley both see the bout 97-93. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Brian Minto. Brian Minto, career win number 25. Danny Batchelder now the second loss in his career.